Hello and welcome to another episode, actually a very special episode of Tribunal of the Grid, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. And I'm Will. And today, once again, like I said, it is very special because today we have a very, 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 very special guest. First of all, can we just say history? This, this, that's, that's the word of the day, history. Because this woman is iconic. I mean, not only is she the first Yellow Ranger, the first Black Yellow Ranger, but she is also the first Black woman to be in a live action show. Like, come on, like, and she was rocking, and she was rocking the single these braids. Like, <laughs> give her her things. Give her her yes. things. Now, I know y'all listening from home. I know y'all are listening from home, but if you can, go ahead and clap it up for Miss Karen Ashley. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so good. Thank you for that intro. That was like everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was like, all, not the Singalese twist. The Singalese girl. <laughs> the Singalese girl. You have no idea. You have no idea how much that meant to me as Aww. a kid. <laughs> It I'm meant like, so much to me. Like, I remember just searching and searching and searching for a braider that could mm-hmm. do them. And I just was like, I, I, I mean, I was all about the braids back then. So it was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just love hearing that. Thank you. Oh, no problem. No problem. Like, even when you worn them recently, I was like, yes, she better come back and do it. Do it for the people. Right. Love I know. We love I love, it. I love not combing my hair for like a month. Like, it was the best. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I forgot how convenient these braids are. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing though now it's like my neck was hurting my shoulders were hurting like that hair is heavy <laughs> it is it is I, I, I agree I agree <laughs> I forgot about that like 10 bags of hair is no joke <laughs> no, 10 bags that's how much yeah. when you do like the thick ones yeah mm-hmm. like and I like I had them they were they were thick so it was like yeah I remember right. it would be it'd be anywhere from 10 to 15 bags of hair like I was like Ooh. doing the most <laughs> what Girl, I know. Oh, of course you had you had them inches though so i mean yeah, it's it like, was all the way to the butt suffer for the okay. look <laughs> <laughs> that's the motto suffer for the look <laughs> suffer for the look amen okay amen and i say <laughs> okay well first of all once again thank you for being on the show um we, we're, we're not going to keep you too long we ain't gonna keep you too long um <laughs> But first of all, I just want to start out just just with the first question, you know, what does women empowerment mean to you? (sighs) Oh, man, it means everything, because this is the thing. When you talk to anybody, I don't care if you talk to a man, if you talk to a a woman, usually when you ask them who are the first influences on their life, it's their mom, it's their, an aunt, it's a grandma. Women have always been, you know, powerful. So for me, you know, it just means everything that now, you know, we have an ability to be heard, you know, I don't want to say that we're there yet, because we're still working on so many issues. I mean, there's so many things that aren't, you know, there's so many things that we're not equal on. But I feel like at least now, you know, we are being heard and we're not just being pushed aside. And that's for a lot of different things. That's for women. That's for people who are people of color. That's for any minority group, you know, you're able to at least get the mic, you know, and I feel like back in the day, you couldn't even get the mic or you were just kind of shoot away like, oh, here they go or what, you know. So for me, it's just such a beautiful thing to hear, you know, so many people speaking up and fighting and, and wanting to be heard. And that's just always great. That's just, I mean, it's just amazing. Now, first of all, I'm pretty sure everybody listening and even those who, who, you know, who don't really be on social media or follow you like that, Mm -hmm. they may not know, but girl, you are like killing it on social media. Like you are for the the underdogs and I'll be sitting here like, yes, ma'am. Like Mm -hmm. every time I see your statuses, I'll be clapping. Like, go ahead, girl. (laughs) (laughs) You know what is funny? Like when I first started being really vocal and I don't understand why people were so shocked. Like people were so shocked. And right. I hate to say it, like a lot of Power Ranger fans were kind of like, uh, you need to like 
uh, you need to chill on all of that. And I was just like, yeah, yeah. And I was so shocked because I was kind of like, why did you watch me? Why did you like this show? I mean, you like a show about people who are saving the world. People like every episode we were fighting for the underdog. So what like what did that really mean to you if you're going to tell me to be quiet? Like it was almost like it just it, it made me like want to talk more and want to post more. And I just felt like we're kind of in a time where, you know, we have to say something. It's almost yeah. like, you know, were we surprised the other day when that mass shooting happened? No, because we've been hearing for a year, people saying, you know, look at these attacks, look at what's happening in this world. And, and I just feel like it's so irresponsible to play a superhero and not try to actually do things that are heroic in real life. So for right. me, I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, I didn't care if I lost followers. I didn't care if, if people were getting their feathers ruffled. I didn't care. I just feel like you have to speak up for those who need defending or for those who just need to know that you have their back, you know, just a little thing. I'm right. telling you, I'll, I'll post right. a picture like I posted a picture years ago when I did the no hate campaign. And I can't tell you like how many people reached out to me and were like, you just don't understand. I, you know, I came out to my parents. They don't speak to me anymore. You know, it was just all these stories. And I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being, you know, being whoever, you know, you are in life and not being able to be who you are in life. You know, I've always been a very out loud, out loud person. So for me, just showing sol solidarity or just saying, hey, I'm an ally. I'm here for you. You know, in just that little way, it, it just means everything to me. So I know it means everything to me because it means so much to the people that, you Absolutely. know, need it, Absolutely. you know? Oh, right. I, I agree. I was just going to say the exact same thing where, you know, like, especially with all the, the hate against yeah. people of color and mm -hmm. see people post about it, especially my own heroes. It, it means the world. Yeah. And I just think that's what like that was one of the things that people have always said they liked about Power Rangers is that it was so diverse and that, you know, the girls were equally as strong as the guys and we were heroes as well. So for me, I was like, I really was like calling people out, <laughs> which I normally <laughs> don't do on social media, but I felt yeah. the need to call people out because I'm like, how can you be offended by me saying Black Lives Matter? Or how can you be offended by a picture of no hate or how can you be offended because I'm telling you this is wrong you know we got to like check ourselves when when you fell in love with the show the only reason you're following me is because you fell in love with this pretend superhero that was defending the world that was defending things that weren't right so I just really like <laughs> I usually don't argue with people online but I was like no no nah, nah. <laughs> yeah this is, this is some serious this is some serious stuff that's going yeah. on and it's, um, it's a shame that you have people that watch superheroes and watch people doing like you said doing the right thing but when you're actually in real life bringing it up it's a problem yeah, it's just so it's it's shocking. But I think I think what it is when I've really stopped to talk to people, because some people I would call them out and they would then message me and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, I I didn't mean to offend you. And I, I was just saying and I was like, but think about what you said. Like, you really have to think about it. like it's life or death in these yeah. streets for people. Absolutely. And, and you can't say that it isn't because every week we're seeing a new video of somebody mm -hmm. being brutalized, you know. And so I said, you really just have to, like, think about you know, the reason that you fell in love with this show, you fell in love with a, a, a cast of many characters. And, and one thing that this show was, it was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. It's still ahead of its time. It was the most multicultural cast. It gave your friend, whoever your friend is, someone who they could say, oh, they look like me. And I said, mm -hmm. and you, you know, maybe because you've never had to feel that way, it doesn't resonate with you that way, but just think about it. And and we'd had I had some really good conversations with people. And so now it's like I almost like I almost will message them and be like, Are you serious right now? <laughs> or right. if it's just if it's just out and out crazy, because I still get comments that are just yeah. like crazy I'll just block them you know because I'm just like some people I think you can talk to them and they can their heart is open mm -hmm. to you know just at least they're open to at least finding like or just at least trying to hear what the next person is saying mm -hmm. and then there are some that just aren't 
And yeah. you, we know like that it just is what it is. And, and you right. just pray for those people. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. No, I feel you on that. And like, and, and you handle it just so gracefully. And so I just want to thank you. For, <laughs> I, <laughs> I just want to thank you for being the voice of the people. Cause Aww. girl, I, I'm like, yes, we, we need, we need more people, more, you know, people coming out, especially, you know, in, in this fandom, because like you said, like it's, you know, it's a group of many different cultures and many different races. Mm -hmm. So it's like, of course, if you're going to like this show, if you're going to be a fan of it, obviously you fell in love with with these characters who are all of different races. So why would you not want to rep the lives of people who are from different races? Like that that doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. What's even more shocking is the fact that they obviously haven't met you. (laughs) You have always been (laughs) calling people on their shit. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. think it was like a rude awakening for some, and I'm like, where have y'all been? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, where I'm have like, you been? I'm the mouth from the south. Like, I'm usually the one that will say something <laughs> where everybody else is like, oh, you know. But yeah, no, it's just crazy. But you know what? I will say, it's just I hope, like, I just really hope that we're in a, you know, it's always like when you think about like hard times in the history of the world and you think about like, you know, it took terrible tragedies and it was us coming out of the ashes that where we really turned the corner on something, you know, or we really, so I'm just praying through all this craziness, we reach a point where we all do turn a corner. And I will say that this week has been a beautiful week only because I've seen so many people, you know, just embracing the Asian community and embracing, you know, when everything happened with George Floyd, I mean, it was a, it was a horrible situation, but it was a beautiful sight to see people of every color marching down the street going, Mm -hmm. we will be heard, no justice, no peace, you know? So for me, it's like, Mm -hmm. there've been these glimpses of Mm -hmm. hope. And I just hope that we get to a certain point where we are, we do see something change, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No, for real. Like, it seems like we're um, we're becoming more educated, so it's it's kind of forcing, especially like in the pandemic, it's forcing people to kind of take a look at what they believe in and what's going on because they don't yeah. really have anything else to do. Yeah, but it's a shame that that this craziness had to be the thing that makes people pay attention, but. Hopefully, um, hopefully this is, I guess, the beginning of a, of a big change, but I guess. Yeah, that's yeah, we, got, we can only pray. But you know what I will say? Yeah. I, I do believe it's very hard. Like I would because I'm I'm half I'm, I'm a black woman. I, you know, I, uh, I identify as black, but my mom is Mexican. So a lot of people don't know that about me just because I look black. Um, but I was in a family that when my mom had me, you know, there were certain family members who did not talk to her anymore because she had a black baby. You know what I'm saying? And so this was not very long ago. So I do know how right. that feels. And then I also know how it also feels on the other side of it, where people come back around and they go, I, you know, I was wrong for that. Or I've had cousins where they were like, my, my parent, my parents were, were wrong for that. Or, you know, cause we had certain instances happen at, you know, family functions or something, you know, it was crazy stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I grew up in Texas. So it was the South, you know, it's not, you know, as liberal as it is here in LA. So it's just one of those right. things, but I will say, like, I think it's probably kind of difficult for some people to go wow you know I, my grandpa thinks like that or my you know my mom and dad might say some crazy things you know and I really right. have, have been inspired by the you know this generation who are kind of calling out anyone mm-hmm. who's you know it's like I've never seen anyone I've never seen a generation stand up for yeah. what is right and it's it's just so amazing it's very inspiring to watch Absolutely. Absolutely. And also just to go ahead and kind of piggyback on, you know, you being a black woman, Mm -hmm. um, being a black woman in this industry specifically, just in the entertainment industry, are there any challenges that you that you faced, you know, just trying to be an artist or anything that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think with, with it's so weird because you go into these rooms and, you know, Hollywood, when they say Hollywood is so white, you know, it, it really is. Um, there, there aren't a lot of rooms that you go in where the higher ups are 
you know, of different cultures. It's usually predominantly white and you'll have a couple of faces, a uh, couple of minority faces. It's changing. I will say they are doing, you know, people are pushing hard for it to change, but I've gone right. into auditions guys and they've been like, you know, can you be, uh, can you be blacker? <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. or can you, can, you know, or, or can you, can you, can you make it more edgy? And I'm like, you know, and I realized what edgy was, edgy was just make it a little bit more stereotypical, you know, so mm-hmm. they're just different things. But I will say this, when I got on Power Rangers, I think because at that time, they really didn't know what to do with Aisha. You know, it was like one minute okay. the cast, the the three that were there were there and then they ended up quitting, you know, in the middle of a season and they cast us really fast. So I think they didn't know what to do with her. And in their attempt to kind of make her what they called like a sassy kind of girl, it was very stereotypical. But I, I was very thankful that I, I kind of like, I don't know, I don't know that I was I didn't even know where I got that bravery from, but I kind of called them out on it. <laughs> and I just remember, like, it's funny because I did a podcast with like Amy and Jason recently. They were like, we remember that. And I was like, I just kind of told him, I said, you know, I, I, you know, you talk about a teenager with attitude. I am a teenager with attitude. I just graduated high school. We don't talk like that. We don't say that, you know, wow. it's, that's not really what I would do. Can I do this? And I just remember the producer you know, the, the director was kind of hesitant, but the producer who cast me was like, we cast you because we liked you. So do what you think and I, we fully support you. And so they were very open oh. and ve- yeah, they were very, and like, they've always kind of had a bad rap because you know, of the red, uh, yeah, what is it, the black ranger being black and the yellow ranger being Asian. Yeah. It was, uh, but, but the crazy thing is they were, they weren't from America. They were, you know, um, from Israel. So they were very open to us being authentically us. They were very open to anything you would kind of bring to the table. And, you know, cause I remember it was like something like, I was like, oh. no, he didn't. And I was like, I would <laughs> never, I would never say that. Like, I don't care what character this is. Like it was some that stereotypical. And mm. I said, she just wouldn't say that, you know, can she just be right. cool? And they were like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, but I think it's because they were, you know, um, from a different country and they just didn't have that, you know, it, like it wasn't anything they meant to do. They just kind of, they just wrote, you know, and so, but they were open to the change. So that's good. <laughs> no, that's right. Because, you know, that would have been terrible. If they right. just been like, oh, yeah, make Vicar as ghetto as possible. Yeah. Like, and it was like, me? Aisha <laughs> rolls her neck and rolls her head. And it was just like, oh, wow. no. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Like, it was, yeah, it was funny. But they were, like, I will say this, they did not flinch when I said, you know, I would never do that. I just think that's stereotypical. Can I change it? And they were like, yeah. You know, I, I felt a little hesitation from the director because usually actors don't, you know, you don't challenge the script. It's written. It was, right. you know, you don't kind of challenge it. Um, but they were open to it. And luckily the producer was there and he was like, absolutely. That's good. Now, now yeah. that, that, that that's actually a very positive thing to yeah. to say because that because we've heard horror stories and it's like <laughs> you, know, you hear horror stories and it's like oh my gosh like what kind of place is this? I but know. Just, <laughs> well, some of those horror stories are true. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but that part I can wholeheartedly say they were not a team of executives that were on any type of racist agenda. They were very like from day one wanted it to be multicultural. They got it. Like they were like every little Mm -hmm. kid in the world needs to have someone they call their own. They had it from the very beginning. And so for that, kudos to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I did read in the interview that you were 11 or 12 when you when you actually were a part of crush (laughs) now tell me a little bit about that sis because i'm like you were young young like yeah i was i was 12 when the group first got together and we like i remember i had went to there was like a show it was kind of like a soul train kind of show or whatever but it was like the local radio station was doing it and i had lied about my age and said i was 16 which i don't know how they believe that because i look at pictures and i look 
five. Um, but I went <laughs> to this audition and that's where I met my manager and I met one of the members of Crush and the, the group was instantly formed. Um, but yeah, I was 12 years old and we worked for about a year just getting our demos together and performing live and just rehearsing, like getting our show together wow. and figuring out who we were as a group. And then we signed our record deal when I was 13. Um, but yeah, it was like we were so young and babies and I did that I always say crush was kind of like my my audition for the rest of my life like my work ethic my just mm. everything we everything you do we I learned in crush you know I learned it all like how to do an interview how to talk in public how to you know oh I wow remember, okay uh, yeah I remember going to the audition for um Power Rangers and when I first went it was like this mass open like you know, just a big casting call. So there were thousands of people and they literally were like, okay, are you a martial artist, a dancer or a gymnast? And I was like, I'm a dancer. And they were like, okay, dance. And like, there was no music. There was, oh. there was no oh, wow. warm up, warm up over there and, and then hit it. <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, dance. And so, but that didn't shake me, which it shook a lot of people just in that room that I was in. It shook a lot of people, but it didn't shake me because that's how they trained us in, in Crush. Like they were like, one day you're going to be on stage and the sound is going to go out and you better keep dancing and you better keep singing. <laughs> and so oh, wow. okay. for me, I had like, I'd been told on many occasions, hit it and you just had to go. And so I just did it and the girl was like okay can you come back later and right then I was like okay this is mine to lose or mine to get so one of the two and four <laughs> days later I got it <laughs> okay so yeah disciplined. I know that's yeah. right oh holy yeah so young I said so disciplined especially at 12 like to be like this is what I want boom we're gonna do it we're gonna get it mm. Yeah, yeah. I it's weird. I think it's just one of those things like I had I had just knew like from a very young age. Like there are pictures of me when I was like three years old and I'm performing, you know, with a microphone and Aww. I just knew what I wanted. And so I knew in order to get it, I had to do these like I just knew what I needed to do. And thankfully I had the right people around me who were like, Okay, you know, rehearsals Saturdays and Sundays and after school and you can't be a cheerleader, you gotta go to vocal training and you got you can't do this you gotta do this and I was like okay okay <laughs> wow yeah because I I'm not gonna lie like I remember because first of all like I as a kid I was just always watching different movies and all this stuff stuff that I probably shouldn't have been watching as like as a little kid right but <laughs> but like but I remember hearing that song like, I remember hearing everybody to get together and I had no idea that that was that you were in crush. I had no yeah. idea, but I remember hearing the song because I that was my favorite part was always everybody get together, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know. So I was yeah. like, oh, shoot, she's a part of crush. That I so know. Cool. It's like it was so funny, and I remember like when they in my like every it always comes up, and it's it's just like some of the best memories. I did a interview earlier today, and it was one of the he's he was one of the engineers that worked in flight time who was kind of like he was jimmy jams like right hand man and wow. he was like we were just talking and i was like so many things he would bring up i had like hadn't thought about in a long time and i was like it was really a magical time like that was the the moment where you know for like five years i was in and out of a studio all the time and we were in and out of rehearsals and i mean we were surrounded with the the best of the best like I mean it uh, Janet Jackson came to our our promotional tour like we performed at the wow. Mall of America and she came to see us and you know I remember wow. like oh new edition God. new edition took us to the mall when we were teenagers wow. <laughs> like, it, was like, it was like we were just like so like oh my gosh but you know what I will say that kept me on the straight and narrow because it was like I knew like these people work so hard. And if I even want to be even anything remotely close to anything that they do, I got to work hard too, you know? Mm. And, and we just always were surrounded by the best people. You know, they protected us. They, they taught us, they guided us. It was just, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Wow. Now being, of course, now being the first black woman, black first black woman first black yellow ranger in history <laughs> what does that mean to you and what kind of impression do you think it's left you know what I, I you know it's so funny but I didn't even realize 
that's what it was when we were doing it. Like, I didn't even think of it. Mm. I, I just assumed somebody else had done that. Um, but it means everything. Cause it's like, I, the beautiful part about being on Power Rangers is now we're all doing comic cons. And so for the last 12, 13 years, I've been traveling the world, meeting fans and all of you have grown up, you know? And so it's like, I've had so many people come up to me and say, you just don't understand what that meant for me to have that type of representation. And so for me, it's like been such a blessing to like do a full circle, full circle turn and like smell the roses and actually go, oh my gosh, like, like, I think I'm, I almost am glad I didn't know because then I probably would have been overthinking everything. Um, Mm. But it was such a, it's such a blessing and it's such an honor and it's such a, a great thing because I know what it meant to see Janet Jackson on TV, or I know what it meant to see any black actress on any show. Cause back in the eighties and nineties and, you know, early two thousands, it's very minimal. You know, you go back oh, and yeah. you look at shows. Oh, yeah. It's it's like one per show, you know? So for mm-hmm. me, it was always so wonderful to just see it. So I can only imagine, um, I just feel blessed and, and honored to, to even be any, any of that to any of you, you know? Absolutely. And, and we thank you once again. Like, it's mm-hmm. just, it's such an honor. Just the, first of all, you just even have you in our presence. It's just like, oh my God, this is amazing. But also too, it's just, just the idea and just the notion of just thinking like, oh my God, this woman has just been, she, you've been a part of our lives for years. Like, it's you know, crazy. so it's like, I, I sometimes crazy. some people I'm like, I've been in your life mostly your whole life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we all kind of grew up together. Like I felt very much like a kid back then. Um, and it, yeah, it's just really cool. Like you get to do really cool jobs and, and, but to be a part of such a classic show that, 27 28 years later we're still talking about i mean it's just kind of (laughs) crazy absolutely absolutely now we're getting down to you know the last couple of questions okay um so first of all like what inspires you to keep going you know no matter what in, in this industry being 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 what it is and how it's growing and changing still what just inspires you to just keep going you know what? I, I every every day I'm looking for inspiration, but it's um, really it's that drive that I had that little 12 year old had. You know, I've always dreamt of um, my dreams coming true. And it's it's really kind of that thing. And, and my dreams have changed it. You know, back then I would you'd ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd be like, I want to be a dancer, singer, actress, model, choreographer, producer. Like I had all this whole list, you know, and my dreams are still the same, but they've changed. Like my priorities have changed, but it's still that same thing. Like I, I so enjoy creating. I so enjoy, you know, taking a a character and bringing it to life. I just enjoy, you know, uh, meeting people and and meeting the fans. And and now like at the comic cons, I kind of feel like it's my ministry. I've, I've told people it's my ministry to just try to inspire people or just encourage people to find their, to, to figure out their life so that you're living a meaningful life for you and you are doing any and everything mm-hmm. you can to live out your dreams, like figure out a way to make that a part of your life, you know, because so many times I've even been, I just worked or I just like got through my, got through the day or just, you know, a means to an end. And I'm like, no, you can't live that way. You have to figure out what makes you happy. You got to figure out what drives you and then figure out a way to incorporate that in your life, whether it be your, your job or whether it just be, you know, when you clock out at five o'clock and you, this, I'm going to start working on my, my, my passion project or whatever it is, but you've got to turn your passion into right. your, into your, you know, what you do, because it's, it's just, you, you just get so much more from, I don't know, it's just so much more meaningful and life is hard anyway, you know? And so it just almost takes, Ooh, it yes. takes the edge off of all of that. If you know that you can turn to something you love, it just, changes it you know and I want people to live happy lives and it's hard it's hard to do that so I I just always want to try to be like it's my ministry to encourage people to find it figure it out let's figure out what makes you happy 
Wow. Ted Talk. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, for all of you and for me, I will tell you, like, I literally had like the, the worst week this week, but I'm like, say, like, you gotta, I gotta tell myself those things. <laughs> oh, like that. Okay. That was so inspiring. I was like, yes, I'm gonna go up there right yeah. now. Yeah. Cause I mean, think about this, guys. This year, just this year, we have seen how fragile life can be. We yeah. have seen how, like, one minute we hear about this people getting the flu and then the next minute we are locked down and can't leave the house you know what I'm saying and it's just like we've seen and and we've seen too much and we've lost too much so if nothing else that should be your motivation to to just be like if I don't do anything else in life I'm gonna make sure I live every day to be happy I make sure you know and it, it really is about your reaction to things you know I know like every day isn't a happy day I, I can admit to that, but it's your reaction to those issues and those problems. Cause trust me, guys, I have the same issues and problems that everybody has, but it's your reaction. How are we going to, how are we going to just wake up and be like, okay, it's a new one. <laughs> you know, I remember yesterday right. I, was feeling, I was feeling down and I literally was like, okay, I'm gonna take a nap because I need to have a restart. <laughs> I need to like go to sleep. And then wake up and it, and it'd be better. And like, I literally told myself that and went to my room, turned off the lights, put like, I was like, I gotta go sleep. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, love sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you gotta just do it. Like if nothing else, we should all be like, like, we should be like, I'm going to hit the ground running because I am not going to be trapped in this house. Once I get out this house, <laughs> okay, right, right. I'm going to do it all, you know? Absolutely. And the last question of the night uh -oh. of the day, <laughs> if there is anything that you would like to do or anything that you haven't done because honey you've done everything i feel <laughs> it's like oh my god like you've done almost everything but if there's anything that you would like to do or anything that you would even want to like change or start or like like be like oh let me do this over or anything like that what would it be mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything over, but I'm going to sell my television show. I'm going to sell, like, this is the thing. I've been producing. I've worked for productions. I've done different things. I've been an actor, obviously. You guys know that. But now I am I, I'm full on writer, creator, producer, and I'm going to sell this TV show. <laughs> It might be, you know, it just depends like that every year I get a different, I get a new goal. And this is the one I'm, I'm currently pitching and pounding the pavement to sell this show, um, to get it, you know, to the next level. And that's just what I, I, I want to do. Like, honestly, I've realized like, you know, everything has led to this, you know, when I was in crush crush, I did that for five years and then I thought, oh my gosh, it's over. And then what I realized when I auditioned for Power Rangers, I was like, wow, that all of that rehearsal led to this audition. And it just like, it happened. And then that like Power Rangers kind of led to other things. And I remember being, um, after I was kind of went a year and I didn't work like I had been auditioning and I couldn't book anything like it was just the worst. And I just remember being so down and, and, and talking to one of my friends and saying, you know, I just hate it because my friend, you know, she's Caucasian and like she gets like 10 auditions a week. I get 10 every 10 months, <laughs> you know, like it's the ratio of opportunity is so low for black actors you know, and I just hate it. And he goes, well, why are you complaining? Why don't you write? What if you're, if you're, you know, if there isn't a part for you, write that part for you. And in that moment, I was like, okay. <laughs> and that's when I really started taking writing seriously. I'd always been a writer, but that's when I said, no, you're now going to be a producer. You're going to create your, your opportunities. And yeah, other opportunities will come and you'll still, you know, get gigs outside of yourself, but you need to start creating these opportunities. There's no reason for you to sit at home waiting for your agent to call you. So that kind of changed the way that I thought about things. And, you know, um, I've been blessed to produce, you know, I, I produced three films and now I'm trying to get into the television market, which is totally different. And, you know, God pray for me. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> okay. I'm, Amen I'm, and I say. Yes. I'm literally <laughs> knocking on doors and people are like, huh, who are you? And I'm like, let me tell you who I am. <laughs> mm. 
so you know it's like a whole new thing but i i'm i'm so determined all thank right you. well thank you so 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 much karen for coming on the show thank you you're so welcome thank, thank you karen. guys for having me your faces i wish i could see your face brandon you guys are are great i love your energy are you kidding like I know. Look at those palm okay. trees. I love it. I love it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Aww. I was just like, well, shoot. Since I'm asking, since I'm asking these questions, I might as well just go ahead and stay off. But here I am, girl. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Good, wonderful and I'm glad to see you too glad to see you too and once again thank you for being here with us today um, you so much you're so welcome such a pleasure. you're so welcome anytime right. guys you know my, my schedule's crazy but I, I would love to talk again and you guys are beautiful and wonderful and I hope that you know I wish nothing but blessings for you guys Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you all for listening. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It's morphic.